Hey guys, welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. Well, word around town is uh, I might have this motor sold. So we'll see. I'm still in talks with the guy, but it's looking pretty good at, at this point. So what that means is that uh, once that happens, this swap is going to go really fast. And today you're going to see us go over some uh, modifications to the valve cover, modifications also to the intake manifold and uh, certain little things like that. Uh, that are necessary for this swap. So fingers crossed that this happens. And uh, if it does, we are sitting really good. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, I don't want to beat this uh, intake manifold to death, but I just want to show you the last piece of the puzzle here is uh, going to be on this fuel rail. So this is what I came up with and that's how it is installed. So we're just going to weld here, weld this to the rail, a dash 10 feed and a dash six return. Uh, is what I decided to do, I believe. Um, it's either that or a dash eight return, but uh, we'll see. Finally got our fuel rail just about buttoned up. I'm waiting on a, another fitting uh, here. So what we're going to do in this fuel system is, I'll show you. So that's gonna mount like that. That's a dash 10, so a 10 AM. And this is our surge tank, right? So what we're going to do is have these two fuel pumps. These are AEM 400s. So these two are gonna mount in the tank. And then we're going to run uh, two dash eights, so eight AN uh, out, Y into a single 10 AN, and that's gonna go to the fuel rail. Now, after the fuel rail, it's gonna come back to our fuel pressure regulator, which is gonna dump down to a, a 8 AN. And, uh, cause that's what size the fuel pressure regulator, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the size the fuel pressure regulator accepts. So we're gonna have um, off the fuel rail, it's gonna come down to a 8 AN. And then this is going to go back to our surge tank here. And then we're gonna have a overflow from the surge tank to the stock fuel tank. So it's a little bit, it's not very complicated once you get into it. It's kind of hard to explain. It's easier just to do it and see it. But um, so that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, next step, we have our fuel rail just kind of waiting on it going in the car and a couple fittings. So we're pretty much more or less done with that. I'm also waiting on a couple eighth inch uh, weld on bungs for our vacuum uh, references for our intake manifold. But that is uh, no problem. We can hold off on that. Now I want to get uh, working on giving this valve cover a haircut. Um, this, uh, the biggest issue with fitting these, and I already know this because of Nick's motor, is getting, um, getting the height uh, lowered down a little bit. So I'm going to be popping this off just to see what we're dealing with here. But effectively, uh, here's another valve cover I have. Effectively, what we're gonna do is just cut off all this area. So we can shave off approximately an inch uh, in valve cover height. So what I'm going to do now is drill out this baffle here, and this is going to be the one we're gonna chop up. And I'm gonna pop this one off now, so when that one's cut up, we can make sure internally everything's gonna clear and everything looks good before we go fabricating. Uh, anything on that end. Now, Nick said there's plenty of room inside this valve cover, so I'm really not too concerned with that. But um, it also looks like, um, I know Nick was running, I believe, J-Series, Honda J-Series coils on his, but I think we can run maybe a, uh, make a coil pack that I can run that just has a wire going down into the spark plug instead of having the uh, direct coil pack like these are. So that, you know, essentially it could snake in and over. But we're gonna, uh, we're gonna kinda figure it out ourselves here. And there's only so much we can do until it goes in the car, but we definitely need to get this all cut and shaved off uh, regardless. So we know that is something that we absolutely have to address. So I'm gonna pop this cover off and uh, I'll start marking that one out to cut. All right, the first step here is just to drill out all these rivets holding on this uh, baffle. Okay, now it's time to mark where we're gonna cut.
Okay, we have our shaved valve cover. Now the next thing to do is to uh, kind of just clean out uh, all this crap and I'm gonna test fit it to see how everything fits in here. But obviously this is the stock baffling system, so everything should fit really, uh, really no problem. Um, also, my saw here, I just wanna mention to you guys, this saw is great, but it is a wood saw, so it doesn't do a great job at cutting metal because it runs too high of a blade speed. So if you guys any, have any easy suggestions, I was just gonna step down with a pulley system, the motor here, but um, I was looking at variable speed setups and things like that, and with a single phase, it's just not really that great and, uh, from what I understand, but I can only cut aluminum with this saw now just because it rips at such a high uh, speed. But anyways, back to this. We're gonna get this cleaned up and we're gonna pop it on and see how everything looks. So according to Nick, this is the biggest piece of the puzzle on this K-series swap. I mean, it fits, man. It's kind of hard to say because it's not in the car yet, but um, you know, I think this is certainly going to get us in the neighborhood, that's for sure. Well, check this out. So here's something I'm trying to uh, maybe come up with a better solution for, and maybe you guys can help me out. Um, you can see the stock coil is significantly taller um, than uh, our cut here. Now that is going definitely to interfere with our height. I know that for sure. Uh, Nick ran a Honda J series coil and he said he had to shorten them and do all sorts of stuff. I have an idea, I'm not sure if this will work, but there's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, if I can just figure out the right coil packs to use, I suppose, um, is to, this is just a piece of tubing, but um, almost run like an LS style uh, coil pack with and with that being said is you know you just have your standard um, spark plug connector on that end and you just run a short wire you know and this can go to any of the four coil packs we can mount them on the side of the valve cover you know we can almost you know mount them like this I mean that's not a big deal so I'm just kind of thinking maybe that is a solution also that would help us too um, and I plan on making an access panel on top of the uh, fireball in the in the car. So when it does come time to do coils and stuff, we're not gonna have to, you know, pull uh, charge pipes off and undo motor mounts and stuff to just do a basic spark plug change. So I'm thinking maybe I could do something like that. And then when if I have to service it, you know, these will just pop out through the inside of the car through a simple access hatch. Um, just an idea. Um, let me know what you guys think. Now we're just gonna shave off the top of um, where I cut with the bandsaw to make it all even. We're gonna use our fly cutter here and get this sucker all, all nice and flat. Well guys, this didn't go well. I had a little buildup of aluminum on the fly cut and the thing freaking started vibrating and blasted off the freaking back side of my valve cover. Shattered it. So that's not great. All right, I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm madder than a mosquito in a mannequin store right now. This was, ah. Uh, it just, like I said, it just vibrated and then, oof, just exploded. So, I was probably getting a little too greedy with the cut. So now, um, on this one, this is my backup, we gotta recut it with the bandsaw. I'm gonna leave the baffle in, maybe that will help support, I don't know, support a little bit. And I'm gonna use the end mill instead of the fly cutter. So we'll get rid of this. Probably see right here on it. See it built up a little piece of aluminum. And uh, that's the end of her. Running a little too fast, a little too greedy on it. And that's what happens. But round two, that's frustrating because that's like an hour or so worth of work just down the toilet. But that's fabrication life, guys. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You try to win more than you lose, but at the end of the day, 
the cards fall where they fall, so. Round two coming up. All right guys, so I'm learning from my mistakes. Um, I went with the end mill and I was just taking off a, mo a lot less than I was before. I was getting pretty greedy with it before, I'm not gonna lie. But you can actually see this outer piece here is actually, you can almost flex it. So a little bit of vibration, it just caught and boof, you know what I mean? It just blew it up because um, it's, you know, I cut out obviously all the reinforcement there. So it just did this and you know, it can only take so much. So we're just uh, taking it nice and easy now, but I think this is going to be the, uh, the way to go. My God, I sure hope that wasn't a waste of time. That was annoying. But we are flat now. So, we didn't blow out the side of the, uh, the side of the valve cover, so that's good. So now we're gonna uh, drill out the rivets again on the baffle and we'll get this thing cleaned up. And this is it. Well, now um, the valve cover is on its way to the media blaster. My buddy Todd does all my uh, blasting for my S54 oil pan conversions. So I'm gonna have him uh, hit the valve cover now in its current state. That way it'll clean up all the inside and everything and we can weld to it no problem. Um, so I'm gonna drop this off to him now along with this oil pan that needs to go out regardless. Whew. Poor car is filthy, but I got great news. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna be getting a deposit on the motor today. So the guy uh, should be coming through this afternoon with it. It's a local pickup, and he actually has a 996 that he got from some lady that the motor blew up and she didn't want anything to do with it. He paid $3,000 for the shell with a blown motor, which is incredible. I mean, so, um, uh, the sale price will be $7,500 on the motor, which is, you know, I was asking, start off at 8.5 and got down to 8 and 7.5, I think is a very fair price for this motor. Um, and he's going to have a perfectly running 911 for, uh, you know, what, 10, 11 grand. So good on him, man. He's, he's going to do really well on this deal. But uh, yeah, it's going to be the last startup right now of the, of this motor. And hopefully I'll be pulling it out in a few minutes here. This is with my fancy pants exhaust too. All right. It actually works out well because I have uh, my gas lights on as well. And that was something I wanted to do is run it really low on fuel because after this it's gonna be running straight E85. So I'm not gonna be, uh, I won't have to deal with draining too much fuel and all that messiness. As we are driving, the deposit came through guys. So the motor sold as of right now. I got a deposit and we are ready to party. Super excited right now. All right guys, there it is. Final drive with the uh, 3.4 liter, December 14th at, what is it, 12.45. Pulling in my driveway right now, and this sucker's coming out. Well, that does it for this one guys thanks for watching uh please like and subscribe if you're interested in this k swap because at this point moving forward we're going to get wild and things are going to go really fast a lot of things were hinging on selling this motor and as you guys can see the motor is sold so uh let's get this thing pulled out and really get hammered on this swap because i've been uh, chomping at the bit to get uh to get working on this thing and i got so many things going through my head it's it's crazy so uh yeah like subscribe and stay tuned guys because this thing's gonna be a turbo k swap 911 in no time